Greetings, greetings, greetings. Peace, love, and blessings to each and every one. Wherever you're at, I hope you're in the best of health. My name is Jariki, and I'm coming to you straight from out of the Bronx, New York. Well, I just want to thank everyone that pour out all the love and support. Really appreciate you guys. And if, if this is your first time watching my channel, you're more than welcome. Please subscribe. It's free. Well, today I'm going to be talking about friends, betrayal, friends in New York and what brought me to this where I'm at. Now, before I dive into it, I, I just want to be clear. I'm not any therapist in any form, not, not here to give out any advice or nothing like that. I know you guys can relate to, many people can relate to what I'm, what I'm about to talk about. Well, actually, this event happened years ago, but every time I think about it, it seems like it's just yesterday. And another thing I want to make clear, I'm not pointing any finger, so, you know, I'm just speaking in general. So no one get no I don't need no one to be offended or anything like that. Now let's dive into it. Years ago my younger brother passed away in New York, in the Bronx. But it was it wasn't of natural causes. But I'm not gonna get into any details on that though. So at the time when he passed away, the very next day I relocated because you know my family they want me, you know, to be around them. So, you know, I left the Bronx. But at the time I was dating, you know, I had a girlfriend. Put it like that, I had a girlfriend. When I left, she didn't even know that I left. You know what I mean? I, did, I didn't say nothing, nothing. The only person that pretty much knew that I left was um, Rasta, because I have a Rasta brother, you know, what I thought was my friend at the time. He owned two apartments. One apartment, he lives with his with his woman. But his woman, she's Jamaican and she's real light skinned. Light, light. If you if you see her, you'll mistake her for, for Spanish until she, you know, start talking, you'll know that she's um Jamaican. Well he had two apartments. One of the apartment, you know, I was staying at one of the apartment. So, you know, I I gave him the key before I left. So anyway, I'm mourning because, you know, that's my brother, my younger brother, and, you know, me and him, we close. You know, and I lost my brother, so, you know, I'm traumatized, I'm, you know, I'm hurt, mourning. But the following week, following week before the, before the funeral, a brethren of mine, he's, he was at Rockers Island, you know, getting ready to go do some time, you know. Uh, good, good brethren, because you know he turned his life around. He's out here in California. I'm not going to mention the name, but big up yourself. You know, more love and more blessing and prosperity and best of health. You guy, he's a good brethren. You know, and I'm happy you turn turn your life around. You know, he called me because he got the number where I was staying at, and he called me. And he says, "Yo, Rasta, I heard your brother pass away, man, and I'm saddened." I'm saddened, but something else happened, and I'm really upset about that. And I was like, what are you talking about? What else happened? It says, um, Rasta, uh, Rasta, your virgin, Ras, your girlfriend went to check check on you, and he let her in, the, he was at the apartment, and he let her in, and the rest was history. He's walking around the neighborhood, telling everybody, that he knock, he knock your girl. For those who don't understand what knock mean, knock means slept with my girl. You slept with, you slept with your girl, you knock your girl and um, every, every, um, everyone, everywhere you stop, you're telling everybody that, you know, your wife and her up and knocking like you're in love and you, you, you knock her and, and laughing at you and I didn't appreciate it because you know, your brother just passed away and all the pain, he's gonna add that to it. But when he was telling me this, yeah, I, I'm listening, but I'm more, you know, more, more. I'm just mourning because I lost my brother and, um, you know, I know this was something else, but, you know, I was more focused on, you know, on that. So, 
following week we went, went to funeral, buried him and everything and whatnot and whatnot. So I'm 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 home where I'm staying now and you know I got a call because you know they start giving out my number where I was at and got a call. It was her that called me. And she called me and she was like, hey Ricky, why are you hiding? And I'm like, no, no, I'm not hiding. I know your brother passed away and you know me so what's that something going on? I'm like, no, no, it ain't like that really, you know. I just need to be around, you know, some some relatives and whatnot at the time and you know, I had to get out of that environment. But I didn't forget you or nothing like that. So she asked if she could come and see me. So she came the next day and you know when she was outside walking, she asked me if I want anything from a store. So I said, there's a Jamaican restaurant on the corner, a block away from where I'm at. You know, get a fish dinner for me. And you know, when you come, I'll give you a bottle of money. And you know, she got a fish dinner. Got herself some curry goat and whatnot. So, give her the money, we ate, we talked. But me, you know, the type of, type of man I am. If you tell me something, you know, if you think I'm gonna go back and go try to create something, I. You know, that say say thing, I don't join that. You know, you, you're not going to get that from me. You know what I mean? So not because I heard all of that and what's going on. When she came, didn't open up my mouth about that. It's just, you know, and I'm moaning and I'm here and I'm just trying to, you know, build up myself back. And this is a, this is difficult because it's too much pain. You know, and anyone who lost a loved one know, know what I'm going through. So she there, spent a few hours walked her back to the subway she went back to the bronx still didn't say nothing to her or anything she didn't say nothing to me you know what i mean very next day rasta called me because he called me nutty 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 well i am hurt man i can't believe what you've been through you know no, you know, no, no, you feel nothing. Nothing, come check my man, come check me anytime, anytime you feel free, cause you don't know what I'm going through. You know, I'm feeling it for you right now. I know what you, and da, da, da. So Rasta, I'm good, man. I'm good, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, you know, hold in everything and just try to heal, start my healing process. Still didn't say nothing to Rasta, you know what I mean? Time goes on, time goes on now, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not in the Bronx and, you know, uh, most of my time spent in the Bronx, everybody that I know, they're in the Bronx, so, I came up, I came over back to the Bronx, and, you see, that's why it's not good to put down people, you know, you know, there was a virgin that I knew, you know, he, people always accuse him of smoking crack, and what not. Well, I can't tell because a man shower every day and change a suit every day, clean. But he was in the army, so, you know, you know he still has the army ways in him because they keep them clean. But even though I'm hearing all this thing, I still don't like to judge or put down people. That's, that's never a thing for me. You know what I mean? I'm quick to uplift. But he told me, though, you know, he looked at me and he says, Yo, Ross, you know... I used to smoke crack and stuff like that. I said, man, if you if you never say nothing, I wouldn't know, you know what I mean? Even though I heard. I don't think it'd be wise to, you know, telling people them things. Like I have some people, the moment they say that to them, they start to judge you and put you down, you know, so I don't think it would be nice. He says, the reason why he tells people, because he's pretty much telling them that he's strong, people are strong and they can overcome, you know, whatever trial and tribulation they're going through. And I say, yeah, I understand, but you know, for real though, you know, try not to tell people them things, cause you, you know, you go, you go on through your tribulation and you overcome it. So I look at the man and say, yo, you know, you know when we're hiring? And the man say, yeah, man, my job, man, I could get you a job. And the job where I'm at, he's the one who got me the job. So you see it? Yeah, know where he's at? I hope, I hope the man is in, in the best of health, cause you know, his health over where, it's ill to our wealth. And you know, illness, you know, if you're alive and you live to a certain age, illness is always going to be knocking at your door, you know what I mean? So anyway, work, Rasta, link up Rasta now. Link Rasta, me and Rasta hanging out, still not telling Ras what's, what he did to me, you know. Still not saying nothing. Until one day now, you know, I'm home. 
Rasta call me. Nothing, nothing. I can't believe the woman I live with, I sleep with other man. It's a wicked woman. Rasta, the woman so wicked. She buy her house and everything I invest in her. She left me in the apartment, gone. Now she's with another man. So I turn to him and say, Rasta, you know, if what you're saying is true, you have to know that it's karma, you know. Yeah, you know, you know, and karma has no expiration. So he turned to me and said, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I said, yo, you remember when my brother died? Oh, oh you, you blessed me in a very nice way. Everybody that you, you go around and say something, they told me. But I just didn't say nothing because I know karma is always going to be at the door. It's only a matter of time. What's the? And, you know, got angry and pretty much hung up. You know what I mean? So... With me and the friend thing now, what I learn from all these things, you see, when making friends, you, know, you have to try to know their ways. Know their ways. Know if they carry a dishonest heart and they will, they will, they will betray you. If a woman, money, or even, or even in secrecy operating against you and laughing with you. Because, because you know, there's an inner voice, you know. Everyone has an inner voice. You see, inner voice, your inner voice will warn you, will definitely warn you, and you cannot ignore that. Once your inner voice tell you, yo, be careful. So, with me, you know, I try to learn, learn the people we is that I associate with and see how I can adjust. You get what I'm saying? If I think, if I, if I shoot, if I know for a fact that the person, the person I'm dealing with, you know, they are corrupt and dishonest, I try not to let them keep, you know, track on what I do. I try to let them into my business, business. I try to give them stories so they could go. You know what I mean? Because you know, I know they can harm me at any time because they are dishonest. You know what I mean? So that's just where I'm at. And in New York, if you are over forty. And you don't have any friends in this time you're not gonna make a friend that easy if you're over 50 and you don't have any friends you're not gonna make any friends because everybody is to their phone the phone is their friend so if you call somebody and the person don't even answer you don't get upset if you take someone and they don't they don't even respond don't get upset they know you text them they know you call them but they're good with their friends because you know they're they're browsing, they're doing something else, they don't care about you because their phone is their friend. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, because everything changes around here. Around here is a dog eat dog world. And I can give you a classic example. A lot of people